Praise God, folks. This is all truth speaking. It's, it's been a while. I've been out there on that road with my big truck. Call them old Joe. And it just keeps getting worse. In our community now, you know I'm in New York. But here in South Carolina, I mean, it's, it's the, the violence is, it, uh, I'll put it this way, appalling. Black on black violence is at an all time high. We're suffering from what is what is being recently called by uh, certain groups in the African American community the uh, kindergarten to prison pipeline, where most of the black men are incarcerated from 18 to 34. And the statistics just keep getting worse. In where I live, in this community, in the past week, or should I say five days, there's been a murder. Someone was wounded in another shooting. And there has been, well, I put it all together like this, there has been three shootings. Now we have the South Carolina law enforcement Slid, as they call it, here in our community, going up and down blocks, looking searching for information. It's just appalling. We need God. We've tried everything else. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I agree with the marchers, and we have to unite, which every race on earth know with that we will not unite. But well, we need God, we need God like never before. You can march until your, the soles of your, your shoes come off. That's not going to do anything. Look, everywhere that we've marched, I'll put it this way, and I'll repeat it. In 1964, the first march, we were marching for jobs and justice. At the 20th anniversary of 1980, whatever it was, we were marching for jobs and justice. Here we are, 50 years later, then they had the Million Man March on Washington, marching for jobs and justice. Here we are in 2014, and it's still, <laughs> a few months ago, they still wanted to march for jobs and justice. We are actually worse off now than we were 50 years ago. And even certain uh, um, the government statistics show the exact same thing. When we went marching at the uh, trial, I'm not going to mention his name, we made those people who were extremely racist in that Florida town hundreds, over $200,000. So they don't mind us marching because it's not going to have the same effect unless the unless we hit them in their pocket. We're not going to change anything. Even David Banner said that he said it on the radio. It's we're not going to impact anything unless we hit them in their pocket. Do you understand? Let me give you some startling statistics. And this is 10 stats to prove that America definitely want blacks or black people in prison. Three out of every four young black men in Washington, D.C. can expect to serve time behind bars. This is despite the fact that people of all races use and sell drugs at the same rate. This is by policy mark. One in every 15 black males age 18 or older is incarcerated. And this is by the ACLU, so this is not a nickel dime operation. Let me go on here. This is number three. Black men have a one in three lifetime likelihood of imprisonment. The sentencing project 2014 compared to one in 17 for white men and one in six for Latino men. Black women have a one in 18 life Time likelihood of imprisonment. The sentencing project, 2014. Those are the ones who did the statistics. Who did, well, you know. Compared to 1 in 111 for white women and 1 in 45 for Latino women. Black males have a 32% chance of serving time in prison at some point in their lives. Compared to 70% for Hispanic males and white males at 18 have an 8 percent chance. I'm sorry. Do you see the sentencing project? Do you understand? Unless we're going to, this is not rocket science. Look, put these guns down. Put that drug down. Put they want you, and now they're sending you to privatized prisons. You have to pay to go there. Do you understand? Do you understand? You're literally being replaced. You don't want to hear God. 
you think you're gangs. So you walk around with your pants you know, and you're murdering each other and all you're doing is wiping each other out. We have no friends. We've been vilified all over the world. Let me tell you something. Some people were mad at me in one video and they sent some uh, emails. But let me, I'll say what I want. Do you know why? I had uncles, one who was in Pearl Harbor, December 7th, 1941. One was in the South Pacific. Another one was in Europe. And we had a host of, host of cousins. One was shot in his back in Europe during World War II. And he was paraplegic the rest of his life. A war hero. War hero. So I'll say, any, and the same people that you defended spit on you when you came back home. You've been vilified all over the world. Most of the people think we're mindless imbeciles in the pool. Do you understand that? All you're doing is contributing to their, how they stereotype all blacks. And look at the score. They are not even hiring African Americans with college degrees. Because contrary to popular opinion, most African Americans are not gangbangers and dope swingers. You don't even bring drugs into the country. You understand that this is what, this is how people see us. We need God now. Do you understand that? Stop murdering each other. Stop playing. And every place in our, in our neighborhood, just like Timon said, and just like David Carroll said, it's owned by East Indians and Arabs. Do you understand this? They think you're mindless imbeciles. Stop it. Let's get on God's side so God can get on our side. Do you understand it? It is written in the Bible where God took one blood and made all the flesh of men to dwell upon the face of the earth. Do you understand that? Somebody's perception of me is, is, is irrelevant. But when they stereotype a whole, you're being vilified by one ethnic group that owns 97% of all the media that you see and hear. Do you understand? And I'm not racist, but these are the same people that you've been fighting for, that you fought for in World War II. Do, do you understand? You don't, we don't own anything. We need entrepreneurs. We also need black owned businesses. Stop killing yourself. Get on God's side so God can get on your side or our side. Saints, we need prayer. It's, it's, it's just out of hand. Every place you go, I don't care from New York to Chicago, uh, everywhere, Florida, everywhere we live in our neighborhood. It's just, just an appalling mess. And everyone's sick and tired. Do you understand that? My gosh, we need help. Father, we need your help. Saints, pray for us. Pray for us. We have to pray for our people and pray for our young. And stop listening to these screwball so-called gangsters. Who don't even write most of that crap? Do you understand that? Leave that gangster crap rap alone. God bless things. We need prayer.